Hi everyone, my name is Rashard Langford, strength and conditioning coach at USDA. In the game of tennis, not only do we primarily move side to side, but we need to be able to have the ability to move efficiently forward and backwards as well. Nathan and I are gonna show you a few activities to help build on this skill, so let's get started. This next activity is called the wall drill. This one is to teach linear development and how to run in a straight line with proper mechanics. You're gonna to try to push the wall over. You're gonna squeeze your hips, bring up one leg, whichever one you wanna start with. Now replace the other one in the ground and bring the other one up. Let's find a rhythm. This can be done reactionary as well. So bring up your right leg. And now I'm gonna clap and then you're gonna put that right leg down as fast as possible and bring the other one up. and down. That was the wall drill. Both can be done with reaction and without reaction, but teaching linear development and running in a straight line as fast as possible. The next activity that we're gonna show you is called marches. This is a build up from the wall drill done in free motion and with rhythm. Eyes are up. Very nice, Nathan. This activity was called the marches. A few key pointers for this one is to make sure the arms move in the right motion, right arm with left knee, and just the opposite, and make sure the ankle is dorsiflex, meaning the toe is pointed towards the shin. The next activity that we have for you today is called skips. We're gonna be similar to the marches, but it's gonna be a little higher tempo, still with rhythm, still in free motion. All right, let's give it a try, Nathan. Still pull the ankle up, dorsiflex. Very good. The activity that we just did was called skips. A few key pointers for this one is to make sure the arms are moving properly, right arm with left leg, still in good rhythm, just at a higher tempo, and ankle being dorsiflex. In the game of tennis, change of direction to get to as many balls as possible can help make a huge difference in your tennis results. Xander and I are gonna show you a few activities to help build on this skill. All right, the first activity that we're gonna to do today is called the box drill. The reason why we're doing this drill is to teach change of direction and also understand center of gravity with moving within a boundary. Here we go, the first one, you're gonna just run, 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 and then run through. All right, staying as close to the box as you possibly can. On you. Good job. So this was the box drill, teaching acceleration, deceleration, and center of gravity while changing direction. Multiple ways to do this, you could do a run, shuffle, run, shuffle, have fun with it, change up the drill in between each one of the cones and enjoy it. The next activity that we have to show you all today is the snake run activity. This one is centered around linear development, but changing direction in a linear fashion and understanding center of gravity and also how your feet are placed when you change direction. So what you're gonna do is start on the outside in a two point stance, whether your right foot or your left foot is up first. You're gonna weave through the cones or through the obstacles and still keep the same rhythm as you would if you were running straight ahead. Give it a try. Good job. This activity was the snake run activity. Um, again, teaching how to feel the inside edges of your feet as you change direction in a linear fashion and understanding your center of gravity and balance. This next drill is called the L drill. This one is done in multiple sports. This drill teaches how to change direction, start, stop, and also lower your center of gravity when you're changing direction. So this drill can be done in a fashion of just teaching change direction, but if you have a group of players, you can also do it as a competition to see who gets the fastest time. Ready, set, go.
All done. So again, this is the L drill. Teach and change of direction. Teaching starting and stopping and lowering your center of gravity to change direction. The next activity that we have today for you is called the pro agility activity. Um, this one is very similar to tennis where we're gonna focus on starting and stopping in a lateral fashion, very much to what tennis looks like. Let's do, start on the center, run and run through. Let's do all runs. Nice. Just to recap what we just went over, this is the pro agility activity, highlighting starting and stopping, very much like tennis, and thanks for your help. Receiving the ball in a variety of spots requires the ability to change direction quickly. Anthony and I are gonna show you a few activities to help build on the skill. So let's get started. So the next activity that we're gonna show you all today is called the lateral high knee turn and run. This is one that's done in a controlled fashion where teaching you to change direction, but I'm gonna give a cue to have him change the drill from going a lateral high knee into a turn and run where he's running in a linear fashion. You ready? Yeah. High knees, use your arms. What we just showed you was a lateral high knee to turn and run activity. All you need for this drill is two points of reference, a start cone and an end cone, someone to help you with reaction, the high knee drill, and then turning and running. The next activity that we have is called the red light, green light activity. It's a game that we play as a kid. It's you say red light, you say green light, the person on the other side starts to run or stops and runs. If you have a group, you do it as a group. First one passes through the inline wins. Let's give it a shot. Green light, red light. Green light, red light. Green light, red light. Good. Again, this activity was red light, green light. You can use it audibly. If you have a card, you can go forward, backwards with a red card or a green card. And starting and stopping in a fun way. The next activity we have is based around hopping and jumping. So what we're gonna do is have, again, another boundary set up. I'm gonna have the athlete jump in a linear or a lateral fashion. And we'll show you how to do that here. Go ahead and start in the ready position, down. And then once I clap, you jump as far as you possibly can. Awesome job. Thank you, Anthony. This drill that we just did was hopping with reaction. This is to work on starting and stopping and producing power from a stopped position. This next activity is head, shoulders, knees, and toes. It's another reactionary activity that allows the player to focus, but be as fast as they possibly can when they hear the cue. So this next activity, is head, shoulders, knees, and toes. You're gonna to be stationary to start, meaning you're not gonna move your feet. But when I say heads, you have your hands to your heads. When I say shoulders, you go shoulders, knees, toes. Okay. When I call out a position twice, so I say head, shoulders, knees, shoulders, shoulders. If I say shoulders twice, you try to get the ball as fast as, as, fast as you possibly can from me. So I'm gonna do it with you. Ready? Okay. I got a bit of an advantage just because I'm calling out the drill. But if you can do this with a group, it'll be pretty fun. Ready? Head, shoulders, shoulders. <laughs> ah, there we go. This was the head, shoulders, knees, and toes activity, working on reaction. Playing a game is a fun way to build on different aspects of athletic development, like reaction and change of direction. Nathan and I are gonna show you a few activities to help build on this skill. So let's get started. The next activity we're gonna show you is more of a sport. This is uncontrolled change of direction and we're gonna be playing a little soccer. With just one or two people, all we're gonna do is just pass the ball and move in a circular fashion 
I'm gonna pass with my right foot, he'll pass with his right, and then we'll go the opposite way and pass with our left. All right. Change. Go left. This last activity was soccer. It's a good way to get change of direction in an uncontrolled environment. If you have one or two people, it's good to just pass it along. But if you can get multiple people, it's good to go ahead and play the game of soccer itself. This next activity is called wall ball. It focuses on a little bit of change of direction, hand-eye coordination, and some fun. So what you need to play this game is a ball that bounces, usually a tennis ball, and a wall. So the way that you play is throw the ball, I catch it, I can catch it on a bounce or I can catch it out of the air. If I fumble the ball, I have to run and touch the wall before the person who I'm playing with throws the ball against the wall to get me out. You can play up to three outs or five outs or best out of three. All right, ready? Yeah. Here we go. That activity was called wall ball. Again, some pointers are have a little fun, throw the ball against the wall, run and touch if you fumble the ball. The next activity we have is freeze tag. It's a game where you play with somebody is the freezer and everybody else has to get tagged. It's working around change of direction and again, a little bit of fun. So right now I have the ball or I'll be it. You can play in open space or you can set a boundary. Today we're gonna play in a boundary. All right, ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Got it, here you go, hear it. Got it, all right. So this activity was called freeze tag. It's a fun way to get change of direction and have a little fun at the same time. For more tips and ways to build on your tennis game, visit netgeneration.com.